welcome to the show. You're watching Tech24. I'm Julia Seeger. As a heated debate is currently underway in France over the rollout of 5G and with some elected officials worrying about the health and environmental consequences, we'll tell you what exactly 5G is set to change. And we'll also talk about the prospect of 6G that is supposed to usher in the era of cyborgs. And in Test24, we'll try a gadget that is almost set to turn your car into a Batmobile. The Landmoto night vision system will literally turn night into day by revealing colors. Now, a little over a week before France was due to de deliver licenses, newly elected left and Green Party mayors asked for a national debate over the environmental and health consequences of the technology. The French president brushed aside the complaints, describing those who oppose it as living in the past and wanting to go back to so-called Amish technology. So what exactly is 5G and does it pose any risks? Claire Rush has more. 5G promises faster speeds, less lag when connecting to the network, and the ability to connect many devices to the internet without bogging it down. In the future, it could also connect self-driving cars and fuel new applications in telemedicine and virtual reality, essentially making what is already possible on our wireless devices better and faster. 5G is really just going to be doing the things we do today a little bit better. So what you can do on 4G and what you can do on Wi-Fi will get better because you'll have slightly faster speeds, a lot more capacity, so when there's lots of people and it's difficult to use data, that situation will improve. And over time, as the 5G standards evolve, you will get to the point where we'll have this thing called lower latency, which is basically how fast your data is traveling back and forward from the internet. And that is going to be important for some of the really interesting applications, like something as simple as a, a self-driving car. Before we can all use 5G, however, wireless companies and phone makers have to upgrade. Phones need new chips and radio antennas. And wireless companies have to revamp their network equipment and install new antennas on cell phone towers and utility poles. But 5G is controversial. Some people believe the electromagnetic radiation emitted by devices such as cell phones can cause illnesses, including cancer. The World Health Organization, however, says no adverse health effect has been causally linked with exposure to wireless technologies. Meanwhile, on a geopolitical scale, the technology is also one front in rising tensions between the U.S. and China. Washington is lobbying its allies to exclude Chinese telecoms company Huawei from planned next-generation networks, citing national security risks. Huawei denies U.S. accusations that it might facilitate Chinese spying. And it's time to welcome our in-house expert, Dan and Jake Hadelkar. Hello, Dan. Hi, Julia. Let's actually pick up from the report and talk about uh, the antennas that are needed uh, for the phones, of course, for 5G connection. Tell us perhaps the difference between 4G and 5G. Well, both 4G and 5G, in fact, all the mobile communication networks use radio waves. Uh, radio waves come at the red end of the electromagnetic spectrum. So you have in descending order gamma rays, X-rays, ultraviolet rays, visible light, um, near-infrared rays, then infrared, then microwaves, and finally radio waves. Now the difference between 4G and 5G is this range of um, frequencies in the uh, radio category. So for 4G, you, uh, the typical range is between 700 megahertz to 2.5 gigahertz, while for 5G, it can extend up to 28 gigahertz or even beyond. Now it's this wider range of 5G that uh, provides it with this phenomenal ability uh, of uh, transferring data at high speeds uh, with very little lag. Now let's talk about the environmental impact of, of 5G. We just spoke about it uh, uh, briefly in the package, but what's the actual carbon footprint of this next-gen network? Well, yes, uh, this ability again of uh, enabling multiple devices to connect at the same time without experiencing any lag in the download speeds, that also leads to higher power consumption for the uh, the network equipments, like for example antennas. And we also have to remember that the 5G at its peak, that is at the 28 gigahertz, it operates at shorter distances. So you need more antennas to compensate 
uh, for uh, for the, for this short distance. Now, of course, uh, the network service providers they have come up with some interesting solutions. Like there is a machine learning technique uh, called microsleep, in which uh, these uh, radio power amplifiers they are switched off when there is no data or signaling transmission. So that can lead to up to uh, between 10 to 15 percent of uh, savings, energy savings. And of course, the other key aspect is that. Uh, the network service providers should use new equipment for the uh, new networks and not rely on the old equipment. That will also make a difference. And the other important uh, environmental impact uh, could be in the form of electronic waste, because if you want to enjoy the, the, the real benefits of this uh, new technology, then it's uh, imperative that we, like most of us will have to change our phones. Right. And that, as you can see, it's a burden on the environment. Thank you, Dan and Jake Hadelkar. Well, 5G isn't even rolled out yet in France that its successor, the sixth generation of wireless mobile networks, is being developed. Some scientists say it will be necessary to facilitate improvements in the areas of imaging, presence technology, and location awareness. Well, to speak more about it, I'm joined by Tommaso Melodia, who's a professor of computer engineering at Northeastern University and also the director of the Institute for the Wireless Internet of Things. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, first, for our viewers, what is 6G and how is it different from 5G? All right. So, first of all, I think I'd like to clarify that 6G as a technology does not exist today. Right? It's more like an aspiration, a uh, vision for researchers that we are putting forward. As operators roll out 5G around the world, we're starting to think about what 6G will look like. And we can imagine and think that 6G technology will be deployed uh, eight to 10 years from today, right? So going back to your original question, what is 6G and how it's different from 5G? 6G will be a connection of technology will enable a hyper-connected future, right? A, a future where uh, people are connected with faster links, but people are also connected with the physical environment where they operate uh, and with the cyber environment where our data resides, right? A number of devices, 500 billion devices, are uh, um, foreseen to be connected uh, by 2028. This will include anything from cars to drones, uh, robots, uh, um, construction machinery, factory equipment, medical devices. All these devices will generate massive amounts of data, much more than possible today, to enable this close, responsive, and fast interaction with humans. A okay? number of new applications will be foreseen. Uh, one that you can think of is immersive reality, right? Where people can meet in virtual spaces with a very realistic interaction uh, in, in virtual spaces. Think of uh, uh, things like uh, being able to share a common virtual space um, with, um, uh, with your colleagues or uh, a surgeon being able to operate remotely in real time. These applications will generate massive amounts of data that cannot be transmitted with the speeds that are foreseen for 5G networks today. People in France are already concerned about the rollout of 5G because of potential health and espionage hazards. What would you say to them and will 6G pose even greater threats, do you think? I, I believe that uh, 5G and 6G will pose less um, health hazards. I'm not gonna comment uh, um, the from the perspective uh, of uh, uh, the interaction between electromagnetic waves and biological tissues. I'm not a medical doctor. As an engineer, I can tell you that there are two trends uh, in 5G and 6G, technological trends. Number one, we use higher frequencies. These higher frequencies are absorbed by the atmosphere more than lower frequency. So that will mean that less power will reach biological tissues. The second technological trend is that we are creating smaller cells. We are increasing the density of the network deployment to be able to provide the higher capacity and data rates. When we do that, we are creating smaller cells and we are transmitting at lower power. That means that lower electromagnetic power reaches humans. That means that we have less of an impact on biological tissues. In terms of um, surveillance and privacy, well, that's clearly a very important concern. Eh? Uh, I believe that we need to change, however, the mentality of people. It's more of a policy issue uh, and mentality issue than it is a technological one. 
Tommaso Melodia, thank you very much indeed for speaking to us here on Tech24 about 6G, which is expected to be launched commercially in 2030. And we're going to move on now to Test24. The Landmoto night vision system is able to illuminate details in the dark, which of course enhances the driving experience. Dan, how does it work? Well, as you can see, it's almost the size of a rear view mirror. Uh, you can place it on the dashboard and it's a 1080 HD screen. Uh, behind, there's a seven layer camera and uh, one of the key components is the near infrared sensor. So what it does is it captures light from low intensity light sources. So it could be a halogen lamp, which is not bright enough to illuminate the road. But this camera can capture it, amplify it, and that's how you see clear, bright road on the screen when actually you almost see nothing. That's one part. The second part is that it's also useful in uh, poor weather conditions. It, uh, and in normal conditions, it increases the range, the visibility range up to 300 meters. It's pretty impressive when you see it in, in the dark. Absolutely. Uh, I know you're just coming back from the Le Mans race and you're actually going back tomorrow. Uh, nighttime driving, of course, is a critical part of this iconic race. So tell us more about what kind of improvements have been made to ensure that drivers actually uh, maintain high speeds even during the night. But yes, as you can see, the drivers, they are driving at breakneck speeds, in taking these fast corners at night. And nighttime driving, in fact, is a very important component of the 24 hours race. And for that, the lighting technology has evolved in the sense that now uh, cars use LEDs, that is the light emitting diodes, instead of the uh, traditional bulbs. So the advantage that LEDs have, of course, is that, first of all, it emits less heat. Uh, secondly, it's controlled by diodes. So the amount of electricity, electricity you put in, the result is the amount of light you get. So you can have really intense piercing beams that can illuminate the road up to 800 meters um, in front of you. That's one part. And secondly, it also has a system of uh, cooling. So you can take away the heat and ensure that the lights, the headlights don't get damaged. Thank you, Dan and Jay Cattlecar, for shedding light, no puns intended. <laughs> uh, it actually brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech24. You can watch it again on our website, france24.com. See you soon.